Today's review is sponsored by the new reality TV show, Genuine Reality. The show where you watch people get up, go to work, get home, watch TV, and go back to bed. Genuine Reality. It's as boring as, well, reality. Watch it, Alan. I'm shooting. Seven blood-stained orchids. <laughs> There's always room for Giallo. We're looking at Umberto Lenzi again today. It's always bugged me that Umberto Lenzi has never been recognized for his contributions to Giallo cinema. Of course, Mario Bava started the genre, then Dario Argento gets credit for starting the giallo boom in the 1970s with Bird with the Crystal Plumage. But Umberto Lenzi has made his fair share of giallo movies, including So Sweet, So Perverse and Paranoia, which both came out in 1969, the year before Bird with the Crystal Plumage. A wealthy jet-set widow arrives in Italy searching for thrills. You need some love. Only to fall victim to a diabolical plot against her mind, her millions, her life. I, I just gotta say how much I love Giallo titles. They have so many great names. Some of them have simpler titles like Torso and Deep Red, both good movies, but with simple titles. But then you have these ones with real eye-grabbing titles like uh, Your Vice is a Locked Room and Only I Have the Key, The Red Queen Kills Seven Times, Short Night of Glass Dolls, The House with the Laughing Windows. Uh, but enough about the titles right now, let's talk about Seven Bloodstained Orchids. The police are on the hunt for a murderer that they dubbed the Half Moon Killer. This psycho has been killing women and leaving a half-moon pendant at each of the crime scenes. One night, a young woman named Julia is attacked by the killer, barely managing to survive the assault. After the attack, Julia and her husband Mario set out to find the killer and discover Julia's connection with six other women, all of them targets of the Half Moon Killer. Seven Bloodstained Orchids is a giallo movie that leans more into the mystery side of things. Every giallo movie has mystery in it, has an element of who done it. Some giallo movies lean more to the horror side of things. That's why the horror genre has adopted giallo movies. New York Ripper is definitely a horror movie with its violent kills. <laughs> Torso is a horror movie due to its atmosphere and slasher-esque elements, ones we would see in later American slasher movies. <laughs> Then there's the flicks that are more mystery thrillers. The Bloodstained Butterfly, for example, is more of a police procedural. We follow court cases and crime scene investigation. It might have inspired TV shows like Law and & Order and CSI. Seven Bloodstained Orchids came out the same year, 1972, and is another bloodstained giallo that goes for the mystery angle. There's one page missing, the one for September 29, 1969. Yeah, it was ripped out. Listen, uh, has anyone else asked to see this register? Not that I know of, no. Right away, we know that there's going to be a decent body count. Seven bloodstained orchids. We know that there's going to be seven victims. The question is, who are they going to be, and why are they the chosen targets? We get a good mix of kills. There's a fair amount of strangulations or suffocation, but there is a brutal bludgeoning. <laughs> I like how the killer leaves a crescent moon pendant with each of the bodies. I like a killer with a calling card. It's just something I enjoy in my serial killers. Everyone has a type. We can't change that. Did this belong to Frank? I think so. Where did you get it? 
Someone has the bright idea of sending it to my wife in the mail one day. One thing that always fascinates me about giallo movies is how they set the stage for American slasher movies. There are a lot of things that we see in giallo flicks that we would later see in American slashers. I will admit that I'm probably reaching when I talk about this, but I'm still going to talk about this because I wanna. <laughs> In Seven Bloodstained Orchids, the killer calls his victims before he attacks them. This came out in 1972. We would see this again two years later in Black Christmas. I know what you did, Billy! 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 Stop this! <laughs> then we would see it in When a Stranger Calls. Bobby? What? And of course, in 1996, we would have that in Scream. You never told me your name. Why do you want to know my name? I want to know who I'm looking at. What did you say? Of course, in those movies, the phone calls are a core part of the story. In Seven Bloodstained Orchids, it's just something the killer does. Again, I'm probably reaching with that one, but I like connecting giallo flicks to slasher flicks. I like when my horror movies or mystery thrillers have an overall sense of dread. That creates so much more suspense and keeps you on edge throughout the entire film. It's so much more effective than just filling your movie with jump scares. Seven Bloodstained Orchids has two things that create an overall dread. First off, the killer is going after seven people. It's just a matter of what is their connection to the killer and how is the killer going to get them. As the movie goes on, the main characters and the police find out who the other potential victims are, and they offer them protection, so the killer has to find a way to get to his victims. <laughs> Then there's the moments when the leads find out who the next victim is going to be, so they have to try to get to that person before the killer does. Nurse, please, will you let me talk to Signora Marquis? I told you on the phone, sir. It's after visiting hours. And anyway, you have to get permission from the director. Then there's the situation with Julia. She's attacked by the killer early on in the film. The only reason she survives is because she's on a train, the conductor hears her screams, and interrupts the murder. However, the police decide to tell everyone that she is dead. They go through with her funeral in order to see who shows up, because there might be a potential suspect there. And afterwards, they continue with the death charade in order to protect her. Well, how's our victim? You had a very nice funeral, lots of flowers. What an awful pity I wasn't there. Of course, Julia and her husband Mario want to keep investigating these murders because the cops are not finding much out. That's the case with most Giallo movies. The police are rarely useful. So Mario and Julia continue their investigation, but they have to do this without letting the killer know Julia is still alive. <laughs> I do kinda wish they focused on that a little more. Most of the time, Mario does the investigating while Julia waits behind. That does make sense, though, because she is supposed to be dead and they don't want the killer to find out that she's still alive, so I won't count that as a negative towards the film. It's just that I like suspense, and I think Julia doing the investigation while trying to still hide from the killer would have made for more tension. Seven Bloodstained Orchids isn't my favorite Umberto Lenzi movie. I wouldn't even say it's my favorite Giallo movie by Lenzi, but it is a solid Giallo movie. Not a beginner Giallo, though. If you're new to the genre, I would recommend checking out something more along the lines of Torso or Tenebre. Once you've watched a few Giallo movies, I think you would appreciate Seven Bloodstained Orchids more. And with that, let's get to the Grindhouse Rankings.
We've got a body count of eight. Yes, even though there's seven orchids, there are eight bodies. The kills consist of strangulations, drownings, getting bashed with a pipe, and a few off-screen kills. It reaches the giallo requirements with gloved hands, beautiful locations, red herrings, and painful kills. There's a fair amount of nudity here. Of course, it's a giallo movie. Mostly breasts, but we definitely have an ass or two. There's a decent mystery here. We keep getting more information that keeps us interested in the story. There's an overall sense of dread, mostly because we know that the killer is after seven women. The two main characters are serviceable. They aren't the most interesting, but they do move the plot forward. The story and the mystery are the most interesting parts of the movie. The characters work well with the story, but they could have been a tad more entertaining. I'm giving this a 3.5 out of 5. It's a good Giallo movie for Giallo fans. I can't really recommend it to those who aren't already into the genre, but if you like Giallo, then this is a good one to check out. As always, I want to thank everyone for watching and supporting my channel. Please leave a comment down below. Let me know your favorite mystery-based horror movie, or favorite horror-based mystery. This is The Maniac, here to remind you that the grindhouse will never die. I don't really have an ending joke for this one, so... Anything for a laugh.